Right, here's the uh, the bare board. As you can see, there's a nice row of resistors up on the left there, top left. So um, let's get it populated. Right, so from top to bottom, that's R1 to R7, 270 ohms, red, purple, and brown. And you'll also notice that you start to get an art of uh, mounting these and they're going to stay in place they're not going to fall so uh, I'll just get those soldered in okay so there we have R1 to R7 nicely soldered in so let's move on to the next bunch right as you can see from this R8 is a bit special it's actually a separate step on the board I don't know why probably because of the shape of it but you'll see on the board I've lost it there it is it's like a snowman there's a big circle and a little circle so you bend your resistor like this and then the big circle is the resistor and the little circle is its opposite lead so we'll do it out of sequence and put that one in next so R8 R8 sits on the board like so and he's probably not going to stay in place oh might get away with it that'll do So there we go, that's the uh, upstanding resistor on the board. Let's try and get a little bit straight. Just got that now. So that's R1 to R8. So let's get R9 to R18 in. So we'll crack on with R9, which is a yellow, purple, brown, or a 470. And that is just here. R10, R11 are yellow, purple, red, 4K7. I've already lined them all up, but I'm just making sure. R11, yellow, purple, red, So that's those three. R12 is red, purple, brown, another 270. And we've just got a spot where it is. Okay. R12 is over here. R13 is a 22k red, red, orange. So they're all sitting in quite tightly. Hold. Right, R14 and 15 are 4k7s, yellow, purple, red.
I try bending the legs so they hold them in. So R14, R15, 4K7, and then R15, 4K7, 4,700 ohms. So that's those two in. Oh, that one's a bit rubbish. So R16 is a 47k yellow, purple, orange. R17 is a 10k brown, black, orange. I was going to say I had all the gold bands facing one way, but that one and that one are back to front. I'm not desoldering it. We we'll just have to live with that one. And last but not least, we have our 18. Just in case you're wondering, that was an old 70s, 80s game show with Ted Rogers and Dusty Bin called 321. But just in case I hit any copyright, so I'm having to pause it. So R18 is a 100K brown, black, yellow. Okay, so there we have it. That's the 18 resistors in place. So I'll just give you a second to look at the board. We did go through the colors and the locations together. So there we are, that's that. Right, diodes. So D1 is a BAT85, black band on the diode. Look at the D1, goes with the white thick band on the board. D2, 3 and 4 are 1N 4007s. Grey band on the diode, it goes with the white band on the board. So that's D2. That's D2, so we'll get those two pasted, well, not pasted, soldered in rather. Right, so that's those two in. It really are some thick leads, them two. Just that one a little reflow. There we go, bit of flux, works a treat. So D3 and 4, we're going to have to rebend these. Because they're really, really wide, those holes on these. I think they're shock key diodes. So check in the grey bands, that's D3, and D4. Again, giving some generous length on these leads, because these diodes have got really wide holes. I don't know if there's any significance to that. Five is a 1N4148. D3 
is a 1N4007 and D7 is a 1N4007. Well, they're in anyway. So, let's get that last one in. The 1N4148. D8. Okay, so there's the board. All 18 resistors, all 8 diodes in. Okay, so capacitor number one is a 100 NF 104. C2 is a 22 PF. Over here, C three is Oh, no, it's not. C3 is a 5PF, 4.7. But there's a discrepancy because they've given me a 6.8. So this don't work properly. It shall be sent back to you, Velleman. I'll expect a replacement. C4 is a 47 UF electrolytic capacitor. These are, again, polarity dependent. So C4 is here. There's a little plus on the board, that's the long leg. A quick peek under the wipers. Well, not the microscope, but the magnifying lens. Yeah, that's good. So that's C4 in. C5 is a 10 NF, a 103. Goes in there. C6 is a 330 UF electrolytic capacitor. capacitor. Now you've got a plus or minus on this one, and which is the plus long leg, and you've also got the stripe on the side for the negative. But you'll see there's an elongated shape on this board, which means this puppy wants to lie down. That'll do for that. So he lies down like that. Big old puppy, that one. C7 is 100NF, 104. All the way up here. So C8 is also 100NF, 104, we've just got to find him now, there he is down there, let's try and tack that in, so that's all the transistors, diodes and capacitors populated so tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do the IC socket the transistors voltage regulator trim capacitor displays LEDs crystal we'll put the chip in we'll fit the power plug push button and battery back up but at the moment 
that is the board. Right, well, let's get a bit more of this done, eh? I've been working on my shed. Really crappy couple of days, but if it weren't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any. Right, the, uh... There's a notch, there's a notch. A little semicircle in the end of the, uh... Chip holder socket. Little gold post. Line them up. Sitting in there quite nicely. Right, so that's the socket soldered in. I seem to have this uh, flowing much better today, but my temperature also seems to be a lot, well, not a lot, lot, but I've got it at 343 at the moment. Uh, so next is the transistor T1 to T5, that's the BC547. Quite a common chip uh, transistor, apparently. No, it's not that one. So it'd be these five. There we go, BC547. So that's T1 to T5. Now they usually hold themselves in with their three legs. Remember, you've got kind of a semicircle shape and a flat shape on the board. Match the shape to the transistor. So that'll do for T1, I think. Double check each one to make sure. T2's here. T3 and little tripods like T3s there. Well, these will all hold themselves in. T4. I've been painting the shed as well, that's why there's paint on my fingers. And T5. Going nicely a minute ago. There we go. Right, I'll get the rest of these done. Okay, so that's all the transistors in place. There we go. Next is the voltage regulator, which will be the first one we picked up. So that's a 78L06. It is indeed. And that wants to go over. Oh, that's going to keep all the legs in a line. Again, watch the shape of the uh, component to the shape of the board. Right, trim capacitor, clock adjust, the shaded area. Well, I'm going to show this to the camera. So, number seven. Yeah, that's about right. So, 
you can see the shaded bits here where it's showing you for the adjustment of the clock slow fast so he's a diddy that will so and so he goes here next to the socket that's an old computer I rescued from a recycling centre it had many errors, now only a few every now and again you get some DLL debris come up, you just exit it off makes a good computer for the Arduino and I also watch YouTube up here on it got it plugged into one of those hot wire sort of things where it um, runs the electricity uh, the internet signal through your electricity through one plug and you receive it in the other one and just plug it in like you would the uh, or basically plug the ISDN cable into it like it was a router it's brilliant there we go so that's the trim capacitor in next we want uh, number 8 that I did that resistor in with the others Electrolytic capacitors we've done. So the next is the displays. Now they're showing the dot on each of the uh, displays. So you get the dot of the display, the dot of the uh, silk screen. Now I'm not being Chinese, and I need to pause you while I find the boot hack. So by magic, display number one has appeared to be blue tacked. So we're just chopping on the board. Get the four corners in and dissipates the heat on the item a bit. Higher component. Notice I'm going diagonals just to try and keep the heat down. There we go. So I'll get these other three of those in. Well, I'm going to go out of sync because once we've done the displays, we do the LEDs. But I'm going to do the LEDs first while there's easier access to them. So I've got a choice here. I couldn't decide between Five mil solid red LEDs, three mil solid red LEDs, all the ones provided by Velleman, which are kind of square with a dimple on the top. These are ruled out because they're too big, and I've decided I'm going to stick with the Velleman ones because of that capacitor and it keeps the kit how it should be. But I'd already decided that, well, since I'll have a pair of weird LEDs, I may as well use them where they're supposed to be used. Now remembering the short leg is the negative, there's a white band and like a flat edge on the board, so that'll be the negative. Now it says max 10 mil high on these. So I guess you can only go as high as the... Uh, Display but the capacitor is higher, but with a we'll play ball, we'll put a bit of blue tack on the edge of that display. We'll push the LED into it.
that's pretty much the square edge of the OD level with the uh, display there I don't know if you can see it so we'll solder that in don't cut any legs yet it's important we can do a test for it in a minute um, LED number two Again, negative white band with the flat edge of the board there. soldered in. These are a little bit tricky, this aren't your normal, so we need to cut the outer two leads, keeping the inner two as they are, so outer two, that's what it shows in the picture. I'll show you the diagram quick so here we have the LEDs all four legs the outer ones have been cut leaving the inners we bend the inners together and solder them so these two basically get soldered together I think I can do better than that See how low you can go, slam it. Let's weaken this one up a bit. There we go. So wax from so this is a big solder wax and solder in there and then we can trim them up I think they're soldered Tidy up that end. I'm going to try and loosen that solder down a bit. Across here. There we are. Nicely, nicely. Trim that end to touch. So happy days on that. So next we've got another tricky bit coming up as well with crystals next. Don't know who she is, but actually now I've got those two other uh I'll be back once I've done the other two displays. Okay, so that's all the displays in. I scratched this one thinking there was a peel off screen because it's quite white. So the LEDs are only just proud of that. We should, nah, we don't need to do a test fit. So we'll do the crystal next. And this is a 4,1943 megahertz. Yeah, that ain't going to stay, is it? Is in the right way round or not? There you go. Right, the uh, fun starts soon. So we've done the LEDs, we've done the crystal. Now we have to insert the chip. 
it's actually nice of uh, Veneman to supply the complementary bits of foam, unlike the Chinese stuff, which comes with pins bent everywhere. I don't think it's going to slot straight in. Right, remember you've got the notch on the end of the chip, goes with the notch on the board, or the notch on the uh, socket even. Right, okay, we're good there. Home. So that's the chip neatly seated. You can see where can I get it? Yeah, before the pins were sitting over the side. So uh, a hard surface and just gently roll the entire chip, bending all the pins in one. Try not to almost garbage your chip before you finish your kit. So now it's the DC female plug, but you need a minimum clearance of a millimeter between the base of the plug and the board, but these are mounted solder side. So we're mounting this. Right, one moment. I've just seen a... Uh... God, it sounds like I'm copying Big Clive. Okay, so what I've done is I've test fit the board in the case. So we turn it over, you can see just about the displays and that behind the screen. So um, what I'm going to do now is basically push fit this female connector in because you don't want to be screwing it the back in or screwing the uh, holding that onto that and then ripping it out of the board because it's too high let's get so we get the tweezers on that I want to put pliers on it. Yeah, that's as high as it's going to go. So that's where we want to solder. I'm going to move this a minute. I might use the pad. I might solder that there. Just going to check the camera. Right, I'm going to take that out of the uh, case, otherwise I end up melting it. So what we want to do, I've, because of the components, I've left it on this foam pad. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Is uh, wait for the soldering iron to finish heating up. Thank you. Let's flow bucket loads of solder around those uh, terminals on the solder side as it is of the board. So. This ain't going to be easy. Well, I should have put a bigger tip on there. Really.
just play it around there a bit. Not a bad contact there. Hit the side then. I'm out with solder on this side, I think. Try and get some more on this bit. Right, so I reckon they're good enough, but what you could do as well, just to be sure, is try and bend these in a bit. Just to give them a bit more stability. Like that. Like that. Actually, bend this one away. Just to be safe. So that's the quite firm, secure DC plug. We do the same with the switch. So the switch goes over here. But again, this wants to go on this side of the board. Because it protrudes from the back of the clock. So let's see if there's any... Uh, doesn't suggest there's a gap there. So I might just try and protrude it just slightly. There we go. So we don't melt too much plastic. So are we in shot? No, not quite. There we go. So let's see if I can get this on camera. I've just slightly about a millimetre proud of the board. Actually, we should test fit that with that in place. It's fine. There's one leg on. So that's the switch done. Now all we've got to do is the backup battery. So that's over here. We've got a nut and a bolt times two. This takes three AA batteries. This is a backup only. It's not to power the clock. It's just to remember the settings when it's not powered. Right. Okay, I see where they're coming through. So the wires want to feed through here. 
You see that? Yeah. So the wires want to feed through this hole here. Yeah, I might zoom out a little bit for this. Hmm. We'll snip them back a bit actually. And the battery pack sits there, which takes all the room away from my plan to put in put a nine volt battery internally. One of these little chromey screws. Through there, little nut. Oh, that's not going to be easy to put on, is it? Oh, nice one, Bellamy. That's hard as it's got to go between that capacitor and the display, right. I shall be a second. Long nose pliers to the rescue. Now that's going to fall out. Oh, they're too fat. Uh, we can let's try different tweezers. These ones are spring open, uh, spring closed, so they. You squeeze to open them and then they spring shut and hold tight so you don't have to keep pressure on. They're excellent. Great for SMB work. Oh, this is impossible to get something on. And now I've got... Ooh. I was lucky. It's actually impossible to get that on there. Right, let's do the other one first. I might not do this one. Let's just see. Let's get the healthy hands back. I 
try and turn those at the same time as putting this on. Oh. Okay, I heard it hit the floor. I've got plenty of spares. I will find that one. Right, I'm going to pause while I finish these two. Right, so that's basically all the components in place. The switch, even though it's on this side of the board, silver screen, has been soldered onto the solder side, as has the switch or the DC female socket. And I've bent the pins over just to give it a bit more security in the hole. All the other components have been placed. All we're left to do now is insert some triple a's for the memory and power this up so let's crack on right viewers i might have lied what we have left to do is to uh get this battery back up power lines soldered onto the board crikey i can't see what i'm doing here i need to squeeze this so uh, I've already snipped the red one as you can see, or the positive VCC, whichever, whatever. Where the flipping tweezers come? There they are. I know I've tinned it, I've probably got too much on there. Nope, she's in. That one's just sitting in my way. So let's get that soldered up. Yeah, I thought it'd be out a bit. Get a bit more solder in there. Right, that's positive. Are you sure I'm positive? So that's not the first time that one's been cracked. So I get a bit more solder on there. Ones come out. How did that happen? All right, just hold it on time. I'm going to 
it in on this one now. Just all now. These are a pain to twist when you've got huge fingers. More tweezers. Right, we'll sell with that this time, leave it alone. making a connection but it's not flowing around that pad I can't get down to it there we go now we're making music Right, so that's the battery backup done. So let's get some batteries in. any components on the board. So that's the battery backup spin. So where's that nine volt we've got? There we go. Let's plug that in. Let's plug the battery in. Should get contact. And there we go. Let's turn the light out. There we have it. That's the Veleman uh, digital LED clock. The MK151. It's just a pity it hasn't got an alarm on it with all this amount of circuitry. So I guess it's just press and hold to set. So it's, well, it's 12.43 roughly in the AM. So I hope you enjoyed the build. We'll get this uh, in its enclosure. So no AM and PM.
No. No way I'm okay. Well, it's 12.43 according to my watch. So I said it was 12.44. Oh, we've gone past it. I'll turn this a little bit for the camera. Let's get it on camera. So press and hold the button and it just scrolls quickly through the time. And then dab it for just minutes. Right, we're at 12.44 now. So there we go. Let's get it in its case. So the battery backup's installed. So we'll unplug it. It goes out, not unexpected. Oh, it's got some weight to it now. Let's get this out of the way. Right, so the first thing we need to do, making sure we get the display panel above the uh, red screen. I will take this apart and glue that in at some point, but for now, I'm just going to mount the board. So the little black screws that come with the kit, there's eight of those, four for the circuit board, four for the back enclosure. And the shoulder. Insert joke here. Start again. There we go. I'll just get that one started. Get the light back. So. Just uh, tighten up for the minute. Don't want to overdo it. Strip threads or snap boards. See, that's almost home. This one could go way more. Enough for now. And number four. So we'll take this one all the way home and then just start gently doing the others. You want it to it just bites into that circuit board. You don't need to be strongman competition or anything. It will be tight going in because they're self-tapping screws and they're going into an unthreaded hole. So they're biting their own way in. That was tight enough. If you took them out and put them back, you would. There we go. Just that's nice and tight. We can see the display up there. Next time you take them out and put them in, you'll find they go in a lot easier because it's already been stretched and threaded. So now all we have to do is put the back on. Again, four more screws. Put the washer and the nut onto the DC control panel. And jobs are good. And okay, just do you feel it tight? No, pain, no point. In Stressing the plastics or anything. Oh, there we go. I saw a bit of stress there. That's tight enough then. Right, 
Oh. Just all the different pressures taking shape. Okay, just feel it nip, and that's good enough. I'm going to try and pick up a stupid little washer. And another stupid to get to nut. There we go, dropped it already. This one's going to be a pain in the blooming area. So when you start slipping a lot, you're getting tight. The tweeds are tight, it's going to be good enough for that. And there we have it. The uh, finished vellum and clock. There's our DC, there's our set button. So let's plug that battery back in. This is part of a different kit. And there we go, it's remembered time. Is it correct? 12.51 and I've got 12.52 so if it runs fast it might have been set just slightly out of sync with my watch but if it runs fast we can alter that uh, trim capacitor and see what happens so this will go up on the shelf and uh, I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching click like and subscribe any comments in the box below and uh, I'll see you in the next vid Okay, so welcome back to Down the Shed. It's about quarter to 12 at night. It's big live lives you can hear in the background, so I'll put a link in the description to that. As you can see, let's turn this light off. We've uh, clocks working nicely. I have uh, spent every few minutes checking it and adjusting the uh, trimmer, so I've got it pretty much spot on. Now, I've uh, modified it to the point where I've used double-sided sticky tape and I've cut a 9-volt uh, connector that I had and I've connected it to this 9-volt battery holder out of another Bellerman kit and just double-sided tape that on. You get a sticky down label uh, and that's pretty much it really. So. Um, yeah oh and one other thing that i've realized when you unplug it when you plug it back in it recognizes the source so you can see it says dc that's the battery the three triple uh, double a batteries in there as the battery backup there you go dc so it'll recognize dc or ac but when you haven't got a battery on it the battery backup if you press the actual set button it illuminates the clock for a few seconds, like old school LED watches. So, uh, yeah, you can run it without a main battery, but you just have to press the button on the back to see what the time is. But then that saves on the batteries running the LEDs all the time. So, yeah, cracking little clock. That's now the shed clock. Well, until I make something better. So, don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you in the next video.